Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to Keto Mom. My name is Steve Melky. I'm not your host. This is your host. This is the greatest lady <laughs> good morning. ever created, good morning. Stephanie Milky, <laughs> aka Keto Mom. And today we are going to talk about chapter chapter twelve. We are on chapter on the twelve pursuit. of the pursuit. So as you're tuning in, uh, we go through a book every single morning or something on your mindset. I shouldn't say every single morning, but most mornings we come on to give you something to think about throughout your day. So I actually feel really great. I got up at 5 a.m. We've already done our CrossFit workout. I'm feeling good. Who works out early, early mornings? Is there any early, early morning risers on well, here? I woke up because you woke up and the dogs woke up. So I was up. I've been up. You've been working out your mind. I have been. I've been reading. Yes. I was working out my muscles. And thinking about it today, because today is going to be one of those productive days. So I wore my party shirt. All right. So as you're tuning in, we are going through the book called The Pursuit. It's the pursuit of better in any area of your life. We're on chapter 12. It's called Major in the Majors. Major on the Majors. And so we would love for you to share. So press the share button. Sharing is caring. And we'll dive in mainly because we have a busy day and I, I actually would love to know where you're tuning to leave in, in 30 from, minutes. where are you tuning in from and what are some of the majors that you are focusing on in your life? So I read this and I actually wanted to see what you thought, but it says this, well, our author Dexter Yeager says, I've always been a flexible person, but I have a certain rule. I major on the majors and I minor on the minors. I don't major on the minors or minor on the majors. If it's a major, I handle it. If it's a minor, I forget it. Do you have any idea what that's even saying? Yeah, it's basically saying, it's kind of like the, is it, is it the uh, Pareto principle, the 80-20 oh, principle? I don't know. Where if you think about it most, I mean, it's 80% over the 20%. So he, what he's saying is he only focuses on the big ticket items. He only focuses on the things that truly yeah. do matter, the things that get ahead, that get noticed, that get focused on right uh, because if he's focusing his time on the minor all the little things it just doesn't matter right but it is fascinating that people can say that because typically the big things are made up of the small things so maybe what he's not covering here is that's what requires that's why you need a team of people <gasps> he and talks everybody about that in the team also plays a very valuable role in that right so like your team could be your family or uh, co-workers or employees but he does say, he says, if you have a problem, get rid of it and let go of it. Get rid of the problem. He talks about how if you have a problem, it's time to find a solution and not wasting so much time on minor things in Absolutely. your life. Right? Yeah, I agree. All right. He says one of his favorite quotes is this. Well, he says, he says, sometimes it's hard to live with a winner because winners get into their, like, here's how it is. Here's how it's going to be. I'm drawing a line in the sand. No ifs, ands, or buts. My favorite saying is, that's it, period. I feel like sometimes that's kind of like you. Yeah. You're like, here's the me. deal. Here's the deal. And being a respectable wife, I still respectable wife. I, you are very, respectable. I would say I'm totally a submissive wife. There's um, that. <laughs> number one. What are the you guys are totally in life? So this is, he said, I love what he said right here. He says, what you set your heart on will determine how you spend your life. He says he's got priorities. That's great. So ask him. Let, I think this is great. Right. So what are the things in your life that your heart is set on? It's fascinating. Yesterday, Stephanie and I were having a conversation between like living. She was. It's fascinating. Just the things that make people tick. Do you know what I mean? Like, what are the things in your life that are in your heart that mm -hmm. determine how you will spend your time and how you will spend your life? You were saying yesterday, it's simple, the simple things. Yeah. Relationship with your daughters, mm -hmm. relationship with family, a, a strong marriage. Right. Like not having debt. Those are the type of things. Mm -hmm. You don't need the big, glorious, fancy, all of the things. Right. Hey, Brianne, thank you so much for the stars. Those stars go to an uh, orphanage on Honduras. On Honduras. So thank you for the stars. That's where those go. So here's, I love that he says this. He says, we have priorities. He has priorities in his life. He says, number one, God. Number two, family. Number three, country. Number four, profession. He says, aren't those your priorities? Because they should be. He said, God created you. He created me. Uh, he made us with the potential to be our best, but it's up to us. It's our decision to use That's the really gifts good. he's given us. Yeah. And I think priorities play a huge factor in this. Have you guys ever heard the saying, priorities are never in conflict? How would you describe that? What does that mean to you? 
I mean, everybody's got a list of things that are important to them. And so, so say, for example, you may have a work function, but you have a, your daughter's graduation party, right? So priorities are never in conflict. While work is important, your family, specifically like your daughter or your should son's graduation party is more important. So right. your priority, your priority should never be in conflict. And they shouldn't be in conflict if you have an idea of what your core values are. If you have an understanding of what means most to you, what matters at the end of time. I mean, it's fascinating how many people, you hear these stories about people dying on their deathbed. And um, then like the pastor will walk in and they'll say, well, tell me something really great about so-and-so. Yeah. And they're like, um... You need to talk louder. And it's in the, no, you. I'm, that's kind of what it's like though. Oh. <laughs> like it's in those moments where they're like, uh, I don't really know. Like, I guess... I guess George didn't really make a big impact in life. So I just say that to simply say it's important to live your life to the fullest because the reality is on your deathbed, you want people saying, oh my goodness, are you kidding me? Stephanie was remarkable. She was amazing. Her priorities were her family. Her priorities were she loved people. She was generous. She was caring. She was thoughtful. Like you don't want there to be a pause so just reverse engineer it. Like, how do you want the end of your life to be? Start That's applying good. some of those principles today. That helps you with the saying, priorities are never in right. conflict. I like that. He says, if you allow minors to become majors, you find yourself spread thin so that you are mediocre at the end, at the end of everything and excellent in nothing. He says, you need to do more by doing less. You need to delegate, simplify, eliminate low priorities right. as soon as That's possible. Good. What does that mean to you? One thought driven home is better than three thoughts on base. Uh, we were talking about this yesterday and I said, you know what? There's just, there's just goals that we have that I was like, financially, I'm like, okay, I know what I want in life in general. And I was just sharing with him and I was like, I don't want, there's just things that we have that I was like, we can get rid of. I don't care about like, I'm, I told our daughter the other day, I, I was cleaning up an area and I was like, I'm looking around and I'm like, get rid of it. Like, I, I don't want it. I want to simplify. I said the less we have, we have keep the things that are important to us, but the less we have, it's less to manage so that we can enjoy the things that we truly love. <clears throat> I think that's great. So uh, he says a major key to success is to get more on your plate than you can do, and then you start doing what actually has to be done. That's really good. Figuring that out. So, I mean, here's one thing. I'm focused right now. We have a baptism at our house this Sunday. And we're getting I, for the me, land and the water. For me, I think about it as it's like it's a, it's a monumental day for the people who have made that decision. Right. So I put some pressure on myself because I'm, I'm notorious for doing this. Like I'm notorious for starting a lot of projects. Yes. But I have this, and it's, it's interesting. People usually live in a house of um, unfinished, I'll just say unfinished business until they're either going to sell the house or until there's a graduation party. Right, or I a big, big event. Big event. So um, I have put some added pressure on myself, which I'm starting to feel the repercussions of. But I have tell myself, I got a few more days. I've got more in me. So I would encourage you in your life, like, have you set up some milestones? Have you set up some events to push yourself to the next level? Because here's what I know. I'm going to work really hard in the next 72 hours to get these projects done. And then I'm going to take a little bit of time off the yard. I'm going to take a little bit of time off of the projects. I was realizing today, like, I haven't taken my girls fishing. I'm going to start spending some more very they've purposeful. They've gone fishing just now. They've gone time. fishing. I have not been present with them yeah. while they've gone fishing. So it's little things like that. So I want to be more intentional because I say if we talk about priorities are never in conflict, I am constantly doing busy work and I'm not spending time, not truly spending time. And I'll say this too, like you may be with your family or you may be with your friends but are you on this thing the whole time? I'll show you what thing I'm talking about. Oh, are you on fly. this thing the whole time? Like always on this thing, constantly checking this thing? Or are you actually present with those that are around you? Okay. Just questions. I'm not yelling. I'm just asking questions. He doesn't yell. That's like his yell voice. All right. He says, there will come a time in your life when you must learn to say no, even saying no to many good things. In fact, the more you grow, the more opportunities will come that you will have to say no to. I said, he says this, yes and no are the two most important words that you will say, 
that you will ever say. There are two words that determine your destiny in your life. How and when you say them will affect your entire future. Decide to major in the majors. It's really just making sure you're spending your time in the best place that you, possible. I'm oh, getting attacked by a fly. Amazing. All right. Well, That's it. That's if, the chapter. Well, these are some really good quotes. You can say this. If everything is a priority, then nothing is a priority. Yeah. So that's our encouragement to you today is what are the things that are important to you? Have you written them down? Have you scheduled out your day? Have you ever thought about like, what would my ideal day look like? If I could, if I could make my ideal day, what would it look like? Or what are the things that frustrate you? If you can eliminate them or simplify or delegate, do it. Right? Yep. Um, if you're not able to separate the critical few from the meaningless many, then it all just becomes noise. It's crazy how much noise we get trapped into right. each and every day. Rule number one is don't sweat the small stuff. Rule number two is it's all small stuff. <laughs> it's just super powerful. Like this nasty fly. All right. So what I'm really excited about is tomorrow we are going to dive into chapter 13. This is a great chapter because it's all about showing up. 90% you know of, of life is showing up. Is showing up. It's so good. we're going to cover that. It's going to be unbelievable. Uh, thanks for tuning in today. Our day is a little bit crazy. If you uh, haven't. It is actually. That's why we got up early. If you haven't. I don't know. Sometimes our stories get a little mixed up on Facebook. Uh, like they don't talk well with Instagram. You would think that the same company owns them. It would all work seamlessly. So if you want to check out the behind the scenes of this amazing lady, go to Keto Mom Secrets hey. on Instagram. Uh, if you want more book club ideas, more things we've covered, go to ketomomsecrets.com. It's a great website with a lot of great information. A lot of you come here because you want to know about the, the secrets to fat loss. Well, guess what? You can check those out on ketomomsecrets.com. Or send a message. I'd love to chat yes. with you. Send a message. Um, go crush today. Make your priority list. Reverse engineer your life. Let's say yes to the best yeses. If something's frustrating you, figure out, is it major, minor? How can I eliminate it? Yeah, and also the eliminate elimination part might be delegating. So let's I do get that a lot to our kids. Let's get resourceful. Let's get creative. If you have children, they're the best ones to delegate to. Let's have fun. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Bye, Bye everybody. Good.